Here now is an exclusive CVBT audio interview on an issue that impacts business and the people who do business here in the Great Central Valley. Well, there is apparently a 51st state in America, the state of I don't care. At least that's the theme of the summer issue of Trends Journal. And with us to discuss what has been found is forecaster and Trends Journal publisher Gerald Salente. So where is this state of I don't care? Well, it's right in front of everybody's eyes. We're saying don't blame Obamacare, blame I don't care. Uh, one of our researchers, Dr. Mitchell Skolnick, is forecasting that the greatest crisis in health in the United States, for example, is going to be the obesity problem, the overweight problem, what people are eating and how it's going to affect them long term. And it's just only on one level. The other levels are, well, when you listen to the uh, the entertainment, you know, it's if I were you, you just got me on your show as a guest and I said, you know, Doug, I got a great idea. What we're going to do is we're going to take the most violent element within the prison system, the people that they don't give belts or shoelaces to because they could use them as weapons to choke people and, and other ways of murder. And we're going to create a fashion statement out of it so that the pants are falling down below the butt and they don't have shoelaces on their sneakers. And then we're going to create a whole music sensation. We're going to call it gangsta rap. So we'll use the most ignorant language, show the lowest vile element of society, and we'll call it pop culture. And then you look at the way people dress. You know, I'm old enough to uh, remember when I first hit the business circuit and uh, was working for the corporate world, flying in the 1970s. And you got dressed up when you got on a plane. It didn't necessarily mean a, a suit and tie. It, sometimes it did, but it was always dress the best you can dress. And now look at it. You know, it's a flying circus. You know, it looks like people just rolled out of bed. They could care less about you or anybody else. Go into a restaurant. I remember in the old days when, again, you know, as a young man, not being able to get into the finest places if I didn't have a jacket on. So fine dining also meant, you know, fine uh, dress and fine behavior. You didn't hear the conversation from three tables away screaming in your ear. It was kept at that table. The music was at a decibel level that didn't intrude into your speaking to your person sitting right next to you. You can't only hear them. You look what, look what the discount stores look like. Look what, go to Walmart, go to Target, go to any of them. It's like walking into a big self-storage unit. And you look back in the old days when every little town had their own department stores. And the taste reflected that town. But people were always dignified and respectful. And again, you know, just keep going up and down the list. I was, when I was, I never remember in my lifetime until maybe the last 15, 20 years, where you go into a supermarket and people are on these electric carts because they're too obese to walk. Didn't exist before, and now it's becoming common. So it's, I don't care. Don't blame anybody else, blame yourself. That's the way we look at it. And by the way, the motto of the Trends Journal, our publication, is think for yourself. So that's just the way we see it. So what uh, has caused this? Uh, has it been the media, parental upbringing, politics, what? All of the above. And I mentioned, just look, what, look, at the, look at the pop culture industry. The power of culture is beyond what people really estimate. They probably feel it in their bones, but they don't really articulate it. Take, for example, me being of Italian descent. You know, back in the mid-1800s in Italy, you know, it was controlled by the Germans, the Austrians, the Hungarians, the French, the Spanish. Everybody had a piece of the place. The Neapolitans spoke a different language, basically, than the Calabres. So Giuseppe Verdi, one of his great passions in creating his music was to unify the nation and to raise the spirit within the people to fight the aggressors, to throw them out of the country. And it worked. The proof is there. The model exists. It was nearly a bloodless revolution. He used the power of the culture and music to do it. So when you look at that power, and then you look at the power of politics. 
You know, they, I'm a political atheist. I don't believe in political religions. I began my career just briefly without going into detail. I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate at 23 years old. One of our chief writers in the Trends Journals, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, former assistant treasury secretary under Ronald Reagan. I mean, we're guys that know what it looks like. So what I have to say has nothing to do with um, my favoring one party or another. To me, they're, they're no different than the Bloods and the Crips, and I don't say that sarcastically. They're both murderers and thieves. They kill innocent people based on lies and what they did in foreign countries, whether it was weapons of mass destruction or humanitarian missions in Libya, and they rob our dough to give it to too big to fail. So having said that, the fish rots from the head down and look at the people, the public, and how low they look at Congress and the presidency. That comes from a lot of different levels. So it's cultural level, it's political level, it's social level. Again, it's going, I don't care how I look, I don't care how I offend you, I could care less. I'll go into an airplane with my dirty bare feet, you know, and I'll, I'll stick them anywhere I want, and then too bad. And if you don't want to hear me yelling and screaming at the table next to you, that's your problem. So it's social, it's economic, and it's political. And there's a very big difference in the economy now. You know, you go back to the Great Depression, anybody could look at those, those uh, photos. Even the poorest dressed the best they could, not to look down and out. And now, phew, you know, again, you know, then they go to the opera. Night at the opera is a, you know, it's a, it's a night of horror shows. People walk in like they just finished cleaning out their garage. So it, it's, it's endemic in many different levels. And it all comes back to, I don't care. So how would you fix it? Well, I, again, to me, it goes back to the individual. And when enough people change, everything changes. One of them, is, again, is cultural. I really, really, really believe that. And as I mentioned, the Verdi model, uh, it, it exists for everyone there to see, and it cannot be denied. And it goes back to um, dignity, courage, self-respect, and passion. Is this what you want to be? Is this how you want to be? And uh, again, this is we've never seen this, this obesity plague hit us like this before. Look at the – and again, how do you change it? I only buy local. I don't buy, I don't buy corporate food. You'll never catch me in a Dunkin' Donuts. You know, I go to the place around the corner, outdated. You know, this is the name of the, the place where they make their own pastries, and I buy local bread made locally. I buy uh, as much as I can of, you know, farm-raised anything that's local. I don't fill my body with crap. You know, I'm, I'm in my late 60s, and I don't want, you know, I, I want to stay as healthy as I can as I go into my older age. So, and people say, well, you could afford it, you're rich. No, I'm not. I, I, I can afford it. I've had my ups and downs in life. You know, I try to only eat what's good for me. So I don't eat fast food. You know, matter of fact, it, even the term fast food is an oxymoron. <laughs> There's nothing, you want to call it fast, you can't call it food. You know, it takes time to, uh, to create something good and something nutritious. And um, so it goes back again to me. It goes back to the individual. It's up to the go – to, go to the sporting events. Look what people wore. It's, it's slob wear everywhere. You know, team shirts, T-shirts, and no shirts. And again, I'm old enough to remember, you know, a New Yorker going to Yankee games all the time in the days of Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris. You know, people used to get dressed up. Didn't mean you wore a jacket and tie or a hat. But you look nice. And as I said, air travel, it's a flying circus. So it goes back to the individuals. When enough individuals change, then everything changes. The people will then say, gee, do I really want to look like that? Do I want to behave like that? You look at the Trends Journal. We have a picture of Sarah Vaughn. And next to her, Siley Myers, or Miley Cyrus, whatever that name is. It's a freak show. So you had to have talent, and you had to show it in order to make it. And now, 
Just a bad attitude and some good press will get you anywhere. Sometimes you could be famous for being famous, as they say. Yeah. Now, do you feel like you're uh, kind of a lone voice in the wilderness on this? No, you know, I don't. Uh, we don't look at it in any way of, like that at all, uh, in the sense that, you know, as I said, the motto is think for yourself. This is the way we see it. We're forecasters, trend forecasters. And, um, you know, we, we just say if it continues going in this direction, these are the implications. And we, we took a quote in, in this Trends Journal from um, two famous uh, writers. One of them is uh, Savarin, who wrote The uh, Psychology of Taste. And he said, tell me what you eat, and I will tell you what you are. And he believed that the simplest meal satisfied as long as it was executed with artistry. And uh, with it's the antithesis of, of fast junk canned frozen microwaved American food. And we had another one by Ludwig Andres who said, man is what he eats. So you can see what, where, it, where it, it begins and ends. It ends with the individual as far as, you know, do I, you know, do other people think this? Man, we don't, we don't care. You know, it's not, it's not our thing. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's just what it is. Well, well, we say if this continues, you're going to continue to see the degradation of society. Well, tell us more about the Trends Journal and a, a little bit about yourself as well. How did you start it and get involved? Oh, it's a long story. I, I was a government affairs specialist down in D.C. throughout the 70s. And um, I worked for the chemical industry, actually, in those days. And, and the Iranian conflict started breaking out. And uh, I had been following what was going on in Iran, you know, for years. And I knew about the overthrow of the democratically elected government of Mossadegh by the MI6, the English Secret Service and the CIA in 1953, and how he had the nerve to want to nationalize the oil fields. The oil fields in those days were owned by Standard Oil in, in Iran. And um, uh, what was the other one? Oh, Anglo, Anglo-Iranian oil better known today as BP. So Mossadegh, what he did was nationalize it, and that, didn't, that really upset the oil barons, so they overthrew him. And they installed the Shah. You know, they plucked this guy out of southern France, and, you know, he's a brutal dictator. People forget that with the Savak, the secret police, and on and on. So anyway, when the revolution started, I knew it was real. You know, I'm watching millions of people out in the streets, and they'd been persecuted for years. And uh, but the propaganda coming out from the states was an entirely different story. So what happened? Jimmy Carter, I'll never forget it, came back from visiting the Shah. He and his wife uh, Rosalind on New Year's Eve, and came back. And in those days, it was a big deal when the president went overseas and spoke, walked up to the microphones after walking out of the helicopter. Announced that the Shah was the island of stability in the Middle East. And at that moment, I became a political atheist. I'd been around long enough. I said, this is one big lie, and he knows it. So then I, after I got over that, I said, what will be the implications? And that's how I began the Trends Journal and the Trends Research Institute. Current events form future trends. And I realized the implications at that time. And I was a young man. I was like 32 years old. And I, um, I said... Oil prices are going to go up, and gold prices are going to go up. So I started speculating. Remember, this is in the late 1970s when very few people were doing this. I started buying gold and, and, and oil futures on the, on the commodities exchange, learning how to do it. And I made enough money to quit my job and begin the uh, Trends Research Institute. And as you see with the Trends Journal, it's 50 pages, full color, not one advertisement in it. We're beholden to no one. It's all subscription-based. And each night we do a Trends in the News feature, you know, the real news, not, you know, the propaganda that you hear every day from what I call the prostitutes. And, people, and I was on everyone, by the way, Oprah, Today Show, Good Morning America, you name the show, from O'Reilly, you know, 